Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Tuesday, October 23rd, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. The day is finally here. Apple will host its highly anticipated event today at the California Theater in San Jose at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Here now to discuss what we can expect is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. So, John, as much as we'd all love to be at the event, most of us are unable to attend. So how will Apple enthusiasts be able to participate in today's event? Well, enthusiasts is right. Um, this is an invitation-only event. So uh, what Apple has done is uh, they've made the video available um, basically online through their Apple TV devices. Um, there's also a couple other sources out there. If you look around, you can find the, the event streaming. So. Um, it's, you know, the first time in a while, and uh, it's pretty fascinating that they've opened it up this time this way. As you mentioned, it's the first time an Apple event has streamed since 2010. So why the wait? Well, in the past, they had a lot of success uh, streaming events. Um, it's definitely touching back on the past. Um, another interesting uh, factor, of course, is that Apple TV has been largely um, you know, an underperformer up until now. So, you know, what does that mean? Well, we'll see. Last week, Apple sent out invitations with the tagline, we've got a little more to show you. So what can we expect at the announcement today? Well, this is all about the uh, rumored iPad mini. Um, it's a 7.85 inch um, iPad. Um, it's um, the first new product under the new CEO, um, Tim Cook, since uh, Steve Jobs uh, passed um, a little over a year ago. Um, so it is uh, rather significant. Um, so um, that is uh, one element. There's also a couple of other rumored um, announcements that uh, are possibly going to be included, um, including uh, um, new uh, Macs and uh, you know, some other products tied into that as well. So the main focus, obviously, this rumored iPad mini. What are some of the specs that have been leaked about this device so far? Well, uh, it starts with that new uh, screen, the f new form factor, the um, 7.85 inch screen. Um, I think it was uh, Steve Jobs that once famously said uh, they should have come with a, a file on the back so you could, you know, file down your nails. So um, they're embracing a new, a new product here, a new um, form factor that clearly um, other competitors have had some success coming into the market, including um, Amazon, including Google. Um, they're saying that the uh, screen will not be a retina screen, their top of the line screen. Um, there will be an A5 processor and uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. Um, now, there are um, other rumors and things that we'll see uh, that we'll learn in just a couple hours here about the price, uh, some confirmation there, um, some of the capacity, uh, the colors, some of those other things. And there's also a rumor about the name. Um, it may take on a, a different name than the iPad mini. So. The rumored starting prices are anywhere between $250 and $350. And according to 9to5Mac, their reliable sources quote a starting price at $329. So do you feel that's a competitive price point? You know, they're in an interesting spot. They, they've definitely got, uh, you know, they have a captive market. Um, and I think that uh, this one remains, well, it remains to be seen what will truly happen here. Um, that, that price point is very close to the um, $299 um, iPod touch price. Um, now, some analysts have said the starting uh, sweet spot for um, a tablet in, in this range would be somewhere, you know, between 250 to 300 So, you know, they've, they've got a lot of pressure there to make this work. Um, the, the positioning of price is going to be a, a question going forward. Um, we'll see how successful that is. Gumdrop cases have already created ruggedized iPad mini cases, even though Apple hasn't yet officially released its iPad mini product. So do you feel that's a smart move? Uh, what, what were to happen if the rumored specs for the mini turn out to be false? You know, it's interesting. They, they apparently have uh, designed and uh, deployed a case uh, based on uh, what we think are renderings and schematics. You would hope that they had some leaked demo version or something like that to work off of. Um, but they probably use that to develop what 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 they've come up with. So, um, you know, if if there are uh, differences with the the case and and what actually comes out, I mean, they could be out quite a bit of money, quite a bit of uh, investment, and it, it could be quite embarrassing for them. So they must have felt at some point that 
uh, made the decision that, hey, you know, the, the, the leaked, the uh, schematics that we've seen, um, we, if we base off of that, you know, we're going to be solid going forward. We're very confident in that. So uh, we'll see how that one plays out. There's also been some rumors about updated IMAX. Do you think we're going to see anything there? I think we'll see some warmed over specs, just like a bump in, in some of the uh, capacity. Um, uh, I think, and this is based on some um, some new um, numbers that were found in, in like computers. It seems to be another um, source of leaks lately is leaked prices and new stock numbers and things like that. Uh, things like that give uh, you know people from the outside that kind of uh, um, encouragement to to, uh, to think that oh there's a, there's a new um, iMac coming out, but it's probably not going to be a, a radical redesign. Um, or even an introduction of like the retina display. Those are usually major revisions that they normally have a different event altogether for. Mac minis are said to be announced. What can you tell us about those and what devices would a Mac mini compete with? Yeah, I think what they'll probably do um, is, you know, even mini eyes it more. Um, they'll make, they'll have, they'll probably have some smaller models um, and perhaps a, a freshened up you know, type of uh, a form factor, something to deliver, maybe colors or, um, you know, maybe something in the case itself. Um, they typically are uh, in competition with the Ultrabooks, the cheap PC lines, um, Google Chrome um, tablets and, well, not the tablets, but the netbooks and things like that. Um, so, you know, this is a very low end of the market type of thing that, uh, you know, are, are just like portable computers for the most part. There were some references to iBooks 3.0 found in iTunes. Anything we can speculate on regarding iBooks? Yeah, I think this will be a, um, an alignment. Um, basically, we'll see more integration uh, when we, we're talking about the new iPad, um, you know, along the lines of what Amazon does with their books. So, you know, again, it's uh, um, you know, basically lining up the, the product in, in, in a very similar way of delivering books content, media, um, to the new tablets, and I think that's what we'll see from iBooks 3. What are your thoughts on the possibility of an announcement of Apple HDTV? Well, I think that uh, the fact that they're streaming on this uh, medium is uh, very telling. Um, I think that there may be some future plans for Apple HDTV on the horizon. Um, so I think that uh, getting people to tune into Apple HDTV, to tune into this Apple channel, if you will, um, is just an, another way of saying, hey, this is still alive. Um, uh, we're coming back with something, and uh, it's a preview of things to come. Alleged photos of a new 13-inch MacBook Pro featuring a retina display have been leaked in a Chinese forum. Do you think Apple would announce another device as big as that at the same event? No. No, that doesn't seem likely. They seem to uh, reserve those types of things for uh, separate events. They're, when they have a major revision, I mean, that, that would qualify as one. Anytime they integrate a retina display um, or, or even a new form factor or, or something like that, this is not, that wouldn't be a warm over. So uh, it would be a separate event for sure. Many of our assumptions about what we can anticipate at Apple events are based on our knowledge of Steve Jobs and how he has handled his keynotes in the past. Should we hold Tim Cook to a different standard, or do you think he'll follow in Apple tradition, giving us one big announcement at a time? Well, it's certainly not broken. Uh, it's not a broken process at all. Um, I think that, uh, again, Apple has a, a captive audience, and... Uh, um, I think they'll they'll continue to release these things one at a time. I don't I don't see them looking at this from a uh, perspective of um, smashing a whole bunch of announcements together. Um, they'll continue with uh, on with this. Tim Cook will continue on with, you know, releasing one product at a time, and it gives them more strategic flexibility altogether. Going off of that model that Apple follows, why do they wait so long to announce products instead of announcing weeks or months in advance, like Microsoft or Samsung do? Well, uh, there's a couple of uh, elements there. Uh, first off, they want the element of surprise. You know, they want to the anticipation of their product. Um, another factor is that they actually, you know, they're the manufacturers, the designers. They, they control everything end to end, and they want that control all the way through. <clears throat> now, uh, Microsoft, Samsung, uh, they've got a lot number of partners that they need to line up to get them in line with, you know, th this is what's coming out. This is the game. Um, so they, they do their, their announcements differently because their business is, is structured differently. 
Apple employees have stated that security at Apple remains as strict, if not slightly stricter, than ever. So if that's the case, why are leaks now so plentiful? Well, there are so many points at which, so, you know, again, Apple controls a lot of their manufacturing, um, well, all their manufacturing from, you know, the inception to delivery. Um, but uh, they count a lot on outsourcing um, components, uh, screen elements, um, chip elements, and things like that. Basically, the supply chain from abroad is where the bulk of the, of the leaks are believed to be coming from. So, um, you know, the, they're, and that's China, that's, you know, the different countries where they've got manufacturing out there. And, and they don't have as, as tight control over there. And they don't, the message isn't getting out that, you know, this is top secret and, um, and all that. So it's, it's a bit painful for them, for sure. Going off of that then, do you feel Apple's secrecy mode is outdated? Do they need to refocus their security model uh, towards a global supply chain? Yeah, that, that's going to be difficult. They definitely should, and they're probably aiming to, to try and uh, lock that down quite a bit. But, you know, you have um, a, a cause there at, at Microsoft, that, I'm sorry, at Apple, <laughs> that, uh, you know, they, they have this allegiance to, to this mission of keeping the uh, product as, uh, as tightly controlled and as secret as possible. But you just, you know, the culture is different at, at these companies that are outsourced. There's low um, paying wages. People come and go, um, you know, you hear all the stories about Foxconn and things like that. Uh, they've got an uphill climb on keeping those things locked down. And, you know, even the, the slightest bit, you can see that just a number um, really starts to get all the buzz going. Um, so, well, I, it's, it's an uphill climb. Apple's retail practices have tightened as well, where Apple stores used to get operating system updates almost a week before public release, and now in some cases they're receiving those new updates in as little as 12 hours before, and that makes it harder for retail employees to be familiar with the update, which can lead to poorer customer experience. So in your opinion, is there a better solution? Well, retail practices, uh, they're a mixed bag. Again, this, this kind of touches on the, the secrecy mode, right? Um, you know, how much can you leak out to the stores and, and how, how long does that take to really leak out into the public? Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's a tough thing to really gauge on, on, on what a better solution might be. I, th I think they, they're kind of stuck if their mode is secrecy, if that's their, their goal um, on keeping these things secret. Um, or perhaps they need to adjust their, their um, high-level goal of uh, um, at least having some pricing out there. Um, but then those, those are tied to details, right, because people want to know. Um, they kind of attract this, um, the, the fact that they're such a uh, popular product and there's uh, a lot of people watching all the time. So, you know, it's, it's a tough road to be on, but uh, it's not a bad place for them because, you know, it's a, it's a largely successful product. In order to provide quick distribution to Apple consumers, Apple continues to outsource its manufacturing, as we know. Uh, is there a way to bring those jobs back to the U.S. and still keep up to date with consumer demand? Well, you know, that actually came up recently in a uh, presidential debate. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see. You know, this economy here is, uh, is a big factor on, on uh in terms of keeping um, jobs here and uh, ramping up manufacturing. It, it hasn't been a, um, a great road the last number of years. So, um, you know, that that's a good question. And uh, to borrow from uh, somebody who once famously said that might be above my pay grade a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what really happens there. Um, I, I Frankly, I don't see us competing with, you know, Chinese manufacturing, um, at least in the, the electronic components um, side of things. Um, but there might be some compelling factors why, we, you know, we may bring some things onshore, um, and that would be things like, you know, like top secret process. I mean, Apple might be, you know, a perfect case for that kind of thing. But then again, they've got, you know, the, the price margins that they have uh, tuned so well over the years. So, you know, um, I think secrecy might be a big thing there, and I think that might be a big driver for that. Speaking of the presidential debate, Election Day is almost upon us. Last night marked the end to the presidential debates. Apple's outsourcing practices were addressed, as you mentioned, in the second presidential debate. With Apple hosting their event today, do you think they'll address the political issues that have been brought up surrounding their business practices? That's not likely. I mean, they have they have fans all, all over the place. They, they definitely don't want to... Uh, 
you know, uh, shun anybody, uh, you know, in terms of politics. And they're not, you know, at this point, they definitely have no influence or control over, you know, what's going to happen in the future. So um, I think that, you know, at, you know, at most we may see, um, you know, we may see some mention of, you know, the, the president's, uh, the president, we were mentioned in the presidential debate, you know, we're, you know, we're a company, an American company and, uh, um, you know, our, our roots and our goals and, you know, and all that, our market is here. Um, but I don't think they're, they're going to pick sides or really bring up anything around their business practices per se. Well, John, thanks so much for taking the time today. And we're definitely looking forward to everything that'll be un unfolded at the Ab Apple event today. It's going to be great to watch. Thank you, Kristen. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.